Yesterday, OpenAI announced a brand new text-to-video model called Sora, and this thing is just on another level, and the videos that it can create are just incredible. I created a separate video showing you some of the highlights and giving you my initial thoughts, but OpenAI also created a research blog post explaining how this model works, so today I wanted to do a deep dive of that and give you a better understanding of what sort of innovations OpenAI had to make to make this possible. So let's take a look at this research blog post that they made. And as I'm reading this, I'm gonna go ahead and unpack all of these different details, so don't worry if you don't know what half of these words actually mean. So in this first part, they describe exploring large-scale training of generative models on video data. And here they're basically just talking about the fact that this is an AI model that is able to work with videos and interpret them, learn from them, and then be able to generate them. Specifically, we train text conditional diffusion models jointly on video and images of variable durations, resolutions, and aspect ratios. So in this part, what they're saying is that this is a diffusion type of model, and I'll go into more detail as to what diffusion actually means in just a moment, but text conditional essentially means they're able to prompt it. The model that they're creating here is using text to drive the sort of generation and the training of this model. And it looks like they're feeding this thing videos and images of different lengths, different sizes, different aspect ratios. So this model isn't constrained to something that's gonna be like a small square with a small resolution and just a few seconds. They're actually feeding it a variety of data so that it can learn from all those diverse sort of inputs and learn how to make videos of different sizes. Now a diffusion model is a type of AI model which is trained in a particular way. And in a nutshell, the way a diffusion model works is that it starts with completely random data and then takes steps to try to get to the desired output. So for example, when trying to generate images, they would start with pixels that are set to completely random colors, and then the model gets rewarded for getting closer and closer to the image and the prompt that has been fed into it. Over time, this trains the model and results in a large set of model weights. And this set of weights that's created constitutes the actual AI model. And it can be used to then generate images because it's going to be able to take that text input and it roughly understands what it should generate to successfully match that text. That's going back to that text conditioning part of the model. So to summarize all of that, this thing is a text conditional diffusion model, which means it's going to take all of this random noise and it was trained how to move from that noise into an actual meaningful image or video in this case, and it's using the prompt to guide it in the correct direction. But here's where it gets interesting, because they write that we leverage a transformer architecture that operates on space-time patches of video and image latent codes. Now, this is a brand new concept, so we'll dive into that as we get further into this post. Then they talk about how Sora is capable of generating minute of high fidelity video, and then also an interesting discovery that they've made through this research, which suggests that scaling video generation models is a promising path towards building general purpose simulators of the physical world. And we'll see some of that in the videos further down. So let's take a look. They talk about some of the history of AI video generation and some of the different frameworks that have been used to try to achieve it, but this does take a new approach. Okay, so here we go. They start talking about these visual patches, which is really a brand new concept. So what they have done here is take inspiration from the large language models and apply it to the world of video. So in large language models like ChatGPT, they take all of this different text and they tokenize it. So they group words together. So for example, the word go can be go, going, went and many other words that kind of all group together into one token. And that's just one example of a token because a token can actually represent anything that has semantic meaning. So like in code, having a curly bracket or a semicolon could be a token. And they have taken this concept and applied it to video. And this is not immediately intuitive, but what they're essentially doing is taking all of these images and creating these space-time patches, which essentially boils down to concepts that exist over time. And that's why they keep talking about this whole simulation thing, because the way that this model thinks is it looks at things that kind of persist throughout the video. So it's not only looking at one frame at a time and learning how to recreate that frame and then 
try to put it all together. It's actually understanding the full length of the video and things that kind of evolve over the course of the video. So if somebody throws a snowball, it can sort of understand the concept of this white ball that is being thrown and then it's going to be able to trace that over the course of the video. Then hooking it up to the prompts, it starts to gain an understanding of what a snowball actually means and how it might behave in a different context. So as you see in this diagram, they have all of these different frames that constitute a video and they're able to break that down into just a stream of data that represents all of these visual patches. So they're able to kind of compress and group all of this data together. We train a network that reduces the dimensionality of visual data. This network takes raw video as input and outputs a latent representation that is compressed both temporally and spatially. Sora is trained on and subsequently generates videos within this compressed latent space. We also train a corresponding decoder model that maps the generated latents back to the pixel space. So essentially, this model doesn't actually generate pixels directly. It generates data that represents these kind of complex but abstracted concepts, and then they have a separate model that's able to take these concepts and actually create a video out of that. So this is another big innovation here because they've been able to intentionally add this abstraction layer that is able to understand the pixels and what kind of concepts they represent over time, and then be able to train a model with that and use that model to then generate those concepts and then create video based on those concepts. And here they talk a little bit more about the space-time latent patches. So given a compressed input video, we extract a sequence of space-time patches which act as transformer tokens. That's where this transformer architecture comes into play because they can predict what sort of things are going to happen and they have a component of memory. This is how ChatGPT works. This scheme works for images too, since images are just videos with a single frame. Our patch-based representation enables Sora to train on videos and images of variable resolutions, durations, and aspect ratios. At inference time, we can control the size of generated videos by arranging randomly initialized patches in an appropriately sized grid. So this is again going back to that kind of starting with static noise. They're able to initialize all of these patches with random data and then take steps from that noise to arrive at something that represents the concepts that you described in your prompt. And from there, it'll actually generate the full video. So here they emphasize how this is really merging the worlds of diffusion as well as transformers. So Sora is a diffusion model given input noisy patches like we've described. Uh, it's trained to predict the original clean patches. Importantly, Sora is a diffusion transformer. Transformers have demonstrated remarkable scaling properties across a variety of domains, including language modeling, computer vision, and image generation. In this work, we find that diffusion transformers scale effectively as video models as well. Below, we show a comparison of video samples with fixed seeds and inputs as training progresses. Sample quality improves markedly as training compute increases. So you can see here there's this dog with this blue hat, and depending on how many steps the model's been able to take to actually achieve the meaningful result for the prompt, it's going to improve dramatically because it's moving from pure noise to the point where the video is going to represent what you actually input as a prompt. They talk about those varying durations. It is really fascinating that they're able to make this work with all of these different resolutions and different sizes, but it kind of makes sense because they're taking these videos and they're boiling them down to an abstract set of concepts before doing all of this sort of training. They go on to talk about that, which says, we empirically find that training on videos at their native aspect ratios improves composition and framing, which makes a lot of sense because if you crop an image, you're gonna lose important data about it and you won't be able to learn from that full image or the full video in this case. We compare Sora against the version of our model that crops all training data, which is common practice when training generative models. So you can see how much better the model behaves if it's given the full data set rather than a cropped version of the videos. It's going to be able to generate the actual full scene. Here they talk a little bit more about the language understanding portion of the model. So training text to video generation systems require a large amount of videos co with corresponding text captions and it's a big problem to actually get meaningful amounts of data for this kind of research so what they have done is they have applied the recaptioning technique introduced in dolly 3 to videos 
We first train a highly descriptive captioner model and then use it to produce text captions for all videos in our training set. So they're essentially using the models that they've already created to caption all of the videos and understand what's happening in those videos. And they use that data set to train the AI text to video model. So this pattern is only going to continue because as AI models become more powerful, they're able to generate data and make sense of previous data and then create even more powerful models. And we're starting to see that play out here with the way that they've trained Sora. We find that training on highly descriptive video captions improves text fidelity as well as the overall quality of the videos. Similar to Dolly 3, we also leverage GPT to turn short user prompts into longer detailed captions that are sent to the video model. This enables Sora to generate high quality videos that accurately follow user prompts. So if you've ever used Dolly through ChatGPT, you'll notice that you might ask for something simple, but then it kind of blows up the details of the prompt so that it can actually make something a lot more interesting than your original prompt. So here again, they're leveraging a model that they already have to improve the quality of the model that they're creating next. Now here's a part of Sora that wasn't really widely discussed in their original announcement, but I think is super fascinating because they talk about the fact that you can prompt not only with text, but also with images and videos. So for example, down here, they're able to take this image and then bring it to life through this new text to video model. So as they describe here, Sora can also be prompted with other inputs such as pre-existing images or video. This capability enables Sora to perform a wide range of images and video editing tasks. So in this part of the blog post, OpenAI goes on to explain various ways to input videos and images and use those as prompts. And at first I didn't really understand this part. So I just laid out all of the different use cases that they had, but now reflecting upon it, I think I have a better grasp of it. So what's going on is that it uses those input images and input videos, and it breaks them down into those abstract space-time latent tokens that it can then understand over time. So if it looks at a video, it can see how the video breaks down into these different concepts, how they evolve over time, and then it has a better idea of what it should do next because it has an understanding of how concepts evolve over time and how they typically transform. So in all of these examples that you're gonna see here in a moment, what's going on is that OpenAI is taking those input videos and images and it's boiling them down into the space-time latent tokens and then reconstructing what it thinks is going to happen next based on your prompt. So the prompt is still going to play a factor, but it's going to use the context of what happened in the image or the video up to that point to guide the model to understand what's gonna happen next. So that's what's going on with these examples that I'm about to show you next. They have a few more cool examples here of taking images and then being able to animate them. This one with the wave, which I thought was really cool, actually started off as a Dolly image and then they animated that. The model is also capable of taking videos and extending them, so this is really promising for being able to create a longer form video with things that evolve beyond just a particular scene. So here they have an example that starts out multiple different ways, but the video ultimately arrives in the same sort of final destination. Since a video can be extended both backwards and forwards, they can actually create infinite loops such as the one you see here with this bicyclist video. But one of the most powerful capabilities of this model, I think, is this video to video editing. So you can actually feed in a video and describe how you want it to be changed so that it generates a new video for you that matches your prompt and is rooted in the original video that you submitted. So here we see that they're using this approach as the edit and applying it to Sora to be able to create this transformation of this input video to this output where the car is driving now through a lush jungle instead. So I've seen folks talking about how, well, the video can be generated, but then the AI has to start from scratch if you want to change it. Well, that's not necessarily true because with this new model, it looks like we'll be able to actually provide some text input and instructions on how we want the video changed so we can actually iterate on the video in a very intuitive way. And they talk a little bit about the image generation capabilities, which was one of the things I was super impressed with the announcement because it looked like they achieved a level of photorealism that we have not seen out of DALI. And we've seen a little bit of this out of mid-journey, but this is absolutely next level for OpenAI. So I think this model is going to be a new basis for image generation as well. And it kind of makes sense because they have this abstract understanding of concepts and then they're able to create a video that really only has just one frame. And that's the image that you get here. Okay, and now for the final part of this research post, they talk a bit about this emerging simulation capability 
that this model seems to present. So we've seen this in some of the example videos that they have, like where the SUV is driving down a dirt path and you see all of the dirt kind of flying up into the air. It really seems to behave in a way that seems to understand how physics in the real world actually behave. And it has essentially extracted all of these concepts through its large training data set and the fact that they're training it to understand these kind of abstract space-time latent patches rather than just pixels. So because they're making it this kind of abstracted thing, it actually understands those concepts more so if they were just trying to generate certain values for a particular pixel. So here they talk about 3D consistency and how Sora can generate videos with dynamic camera motion. As the camera shifts and rotates, people and scene elements move consistently through three-dimensional space. And I've actually seen some people on Twitter doing some modeling of these different spaces, and they're actually surprisingly consistent. So I'm really curious to see if this model then feeds a new model that is able to fully generate 3D spaces and 3D models of things. And it seems like they could apply a very similar approach where they take all of the learnings that they have from this model to then be able to actually generate that next level model that generates 3D environments. They also talk about long range coherence and object permanence. A significant challenge for video generation systems has been maintaining temporal consistency when sampling long videos. We find that Sora is often, though not always, able to effectively model both short and long range dependencies. For example, our model can persist people, animals, and objects even when they are occluded or leave the frame. And this is again because it kind of understands abstract concepts. The model thinks in abstract concepts rather than actual specific pixels that are on the screen. Likewise, it can generate multiple shots of the same character in a single sample, maintaining their appearance throughout the video. They have a couple more examples here, and then this is a pretty funny example, simulating digital world. So they show here a prompt of Minecraft actually generating some of the interactions that you might actually see in Minecraft. These capabilities suggest that continued scaling of video models is a promising path towards the development of highly capable simulators of the physical and digital world and the objects, animals, and people that live within them. Which, again, makes sense, but I think it's not just that it's about video, it's about the fact that they're abstracting these concepts and they're using the video as an input to that more abstract data model. So this new data model of space-time patches really seems to be at the heart of this research and really seems to be the future of how these multimodal AI models could work. Because if we can figure out ways to map different modalities such as audio and text and 3D video into this kind of data model, then this model will still continue to work because it takes all of those inputs and understands them in a more abstract way. Of course, they do talk about some of the limitations, but It'll continue improving as you might expect. So hopefully that helps you understand how this complex model works and the sort of innovation that OpenAI has unlocked here with taking these space-time latent patches and understanding data in a more abstract way rather than just trying to understand the individual pixels in an image. Actually boiling down all that data into abstract concepts and then being able to generate video out of that. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.